All right, here's 276 divided by 12 equals 23 yet again. Here's the exploding dots way I like to do it. It's a picture and I can see what's going on. I found in a picture of 276, lots of groups of 12, one dot next to two dots. In fact, we saw one at the tens level, another one at the tens level, and we saw three at the ones level. The answer is 23 groups of 12 in this picture of 276. Great. But that's not what I was taught when I went to school. What I want to do now is show you the algorithm I was taught as a youngster back in Australia in the 1970s. It was somewhat strange, and I was actually very, very confused by it. I did not understand why it worked the way it did. So what I want to do now is actually go through that algorithm. I'll share with you what I was taught back 40 years ago, and let's see if we can make some sense of it once and for all for young James Tanton. All right, here goes. So 276 divided by 12. So back in Australia, we had to draw a funny symbol to begin with. We had to draw a funny curve shape with a bar on top. All right. Um, I know some countries do it differently. They might write 276 colon 12, but we had to draw this symbol and write the big number 276 under it and the 12 to the left of it. All right. Now, do you remember how everything in math class is right to left, right to left, right to left? It's always right to left, which I thought was strange as a kid because I was being taught to read left to right in every other class except mathematics. However, look at this. Back in Australia, I was suddenly told, no, 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 you do this left to right. Okay, they just switched direction on me, which I thought was strange. Anyhow, you look at the two first. Do the number 276, but don't think 276, apparently. You think two. And you ask, how many times does 12 go into two? And you say, that'd be silly. Okay, so then you go, all right, two doesn't go into, 12 doesn't go into two, but go to seven. Look at the first digit, two digits and think of that as 27. Now, I thought that was weird because the number is not 27, it's 276. However, I did what I was told and said, okay, 12's into 27. How many times does 12 go into 27? Well, it goes in twice, and we had to write that two at the top. And as a kid, I got really nervous, because apparently the alignment mattered where you write the number. But we had to write it up there, and I think it goes in the middle column, if I remember correctly. Then back in Australia, 40 years ago, we then had to actually write two times 12 is 24. Okay? And then we had to suddenly just do a subtraction problem. Why not? 27 taken 24 is 3. I had no idea as a youngster where that was coming from. Okay. Pretty bizarre, but that was not the bizarrest part of all. Then, we had this three down here. We still have this six up here that we haven't dealt with yet. We were told back in Australia, just draw an arrow, bring that six down, and make that three just change to 36. It just magically changes. That is awfully weird. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, work with 36. I don't know why, just doing what I was told. How many times does 12 go into 36? Apparently it goes in three times. You write the three at the top. Write three times 12 is 36. Do another subtraction problem, why not? And then you get zero, and apparently zero is good. All right, now I, I'm, I'm being a little bit flippant here, but it is true, I did not understand this algorithm when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, however old I was, I just did it. I was actually performing for my class and getting the right answers more or less, but I did not understand what I was doing. So I wanna say, figure out what's really going on here because of course this is a good correct technique there's nothing wrong with this of course they're teaching good sound things in, in school so the question is how can i make actual perfect sense of it for my sake all right so i'm going to compare the standard algorithm with what i feel i truly understand this picture so back to the algorithm look at the two you're asking how many times the 12 go into two okay so what am i really doing when i say look at that two what am i really looking at it must be this two here these two dots and you're asking can you see any 12s in those two dots well, no, so don't be silly. Then we said to go to seven. Now, we were told to think of that 27, which I don't think is quite right, because it's not really 27, because it really is just two dots and these seven dots. So really, I'm putting my hand over this part of the picture and saying, look at that part of the picture, the left two boxes, two dots and seven dots. Okay, only 12s amongst those two dots and seven dots? Why, well, yes, we found lots of them. In fact, we found two groups of them. So we even wrote to two groups of them like this. Ooh, the alignments look the same. All right, so we found two groups of 12 amongst these two dots and seven dots. Now the question is, what's the subtraction business about? What are we really doing there? Well, we're saying, okay, we've dealt with those two dots, those two groups of 12, so we might as well get rid of them. We don't need to do them anymore. We've got them sorted out. And that leaves three dots left behind we have to contend with. Three dots left behind we have to contend with. Now the part that I found really confusing as a kid was bringing the six down, this three, these three dots here, just magically change into 36. Well, the language is a little bit off there. I do say that, because I'm not really saying change it to 36. I'm saying remove my hand and now focus on the three dots and the six dots. Three dots and six dots next together. Grand. Now ask any groups of 12 in there. Why, well, yes, we found three of them. We wrote three. We wrote three. We did another subtraction problem just to show there were no dots left behind. That means we completed the division problem and there's no remainders. 
So actually, this is a very good approach. It works brilliantly. In fact, if you get tired of drawing dots and boxes and using a lot of ink, this is a good pencil and paper method for doing it. Though, I would say, I bet if you did a lot of division problems by drawing these dots and boxes, you probably get tired of drawing dots. You must just, might just write the numbers 2, 7, 6. You might just do that. You probably might not even bother drawing the boxes anymore. You just write, might write the numbers 2, 7, 6. And you might find yourself doing something like this, or as a shorthand for this image you have in mind. Because I bet whoever created this method many, many centuries ago was actually working with pictures to begin with, and this all became a shorthand for the pictures. So I say there's no harm in going back to the pictures and just doing it that way, or if you like the shorthand method on pencil and paper that's more abstract, it's good too. All good correct mathematics is fabulously good and fabulously correct. Nothing goes wrong, it's just a matter of your own personal style and choice. So whatever you like best is good. Go for it.